Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now, it is the winter, so it is project time. I've got a few things going on on this car. Um, you haven't seen it for a little while, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update and show you what we're working on. No specific jobs. Uh, there's actually three or four things I'm doing that are reasonably labor intensive, and it helps to have it off the road for a, maybe a few weeks. There's nothing going on over Christmas, so ideal time to get up here late at night and get some done. So before we get stuck into this and I show you what we're doing, let's jump to that intro. So the first one on the list is the brakes. Now this came with some Porsche four pots off a 968 um, Boxster and they were the rears. Um, they were all right, but I didn't like the pedal feel. These came off of my Noggy. These are Leon Cupra R's running DS3000 pads. Were they 2500? DS2500 pads. I've got 3000s on the shelf and some C hook discs and they braked phenomenally. Track days, everything, not a single problem. So I preferred the, the feel of the pedal of that one, so I thought I'd swap them on. Nice, simple, straightforward fit, just a straight swap. I need to bleed the brakes because when I got it, the brake pedal, it just didn't feel 100%. It may have been the characteristics of the brakes. I haven't actually tried these yet, so uh, I'll take it out on the road and I know what they feel like. We might have a binding rear caliper, very common on these. Um, so we may need to, to pay that some attention, but that is the braking system. I know that works really well. Um, the Nagaro blue one was only 275 brake, I think it was. 280 brake, I can't remember what the printout said. Um, and these brakes stopped it absolutely phenomenally on track, everything. Now this is 350 odd. So yeah, it needs decent stopping power. These definitely do the job um, and they are well worth having. So I thought I would swap them on. Um, and then I'll stick the other ones up for sale, recoup some money to buy some more bits. Now, there's a couple of other jobs that I've been doing or starting to do. Um, let's go and have a look at the back, the back. Let's go into the back, I'll swap cameras. Okay, so we'll jump onto the GoPro now. Um, let me show you. So I built a, another seat delete, um, very similar to my previous one. If you've watched the video, you'll know, just a normal sort of QS looking seat delete. And the reason I've done this is because I'm gonna be mounting water methanol injection in the car. Now, um, I took the cage out. I didn't really like it. It was just, it come really close to the seats up here. And it's just, this is more of a touring car. I wanted that, the comfort, I wanted less noise. Um, and I wanted it to be a bit more enjoyable to drive. Now, I also need somewhere to mount the methanol. So there's two things we need. Let me grab the other part. So we need the pump and the tank in the back. Um, so we've got, obviously I don't know the exact location of where we're going to put them just yet, but basically, I think it mounts the other way around, but just to give you an idea, um, we're going to mount the pump and the tank there. So it's easily accessible. I can top it up whenever I need. Um, I may lay the pump down. I haven't really decided yet. It depends how the pipe work goes. Um, but basically methanol injection in there, and then I can run the pipes down through this gap, I need to fill this piece of carpet where someone's cut it from before. And then you're gonna take this trim up, run it all the way along here, and then up into the bonnet. Then when we come round to the business end of things, um, somewhere here, I've just taken the bottom of the catch tank off, as you can see here. Um, using this tab, I'm gonna be mounting these two items. One's a pressure switch. So this one basically is a, an actuator which tells the pump when to start um, based on your boost pressure. So you set it, how you can see that. You set it depending on what PSI you want it to come in at. And then you have a relay system um, for starting up the pump. Very, very, very straightforward. Um, this is a real simple system. And then you're gonna mount a nozzle similar to this, not this exact one, but you're gonna mount a nozzle like that into your boost pipe, which will then spray it and give you water methanol injection. Now, I'll go into a little bit more about that in a second, but that's basically, comes off the front mount, and there's normally like a, an S-shaped pipe here, which then goes up and into your inlet manifold. So at this point, the air's already been round the car through the intercooler, it's really cool. You spray it at least, I think it was 18 inches um, before the inlet manifold to get the maximized, because you're gonna spray a mist of air, a mist of liquid into there, and you want it to obviously get into all the air. Whereas if you were to spray it all here, then you may get really cold, really wet here, and then it might not get so much this end, at least this way round. 
it will cool the air down here and by the time it gets up to here it will just be nice cool air um, and it will do what we want. Right, let's talk a bit more about the methanol injection. So what methanol injection is, a, depending on how you do it, there's, there's loads of different ways of doing it. Um, but basically, you normally mix 50% um, methanol and 50% deionized water, making, making your water methanol. And what that does is it does a couple of things. It brings down your air um, intake temps. It also gives you a tiny bit more of a richer mixture, a bit more bang for your buck. But the, the intake temps is the main reason you're doing it. You can also run a slightly more potent, more meth, less water. Um, depending if you want meth dependent on your tuning. So your mapper could say, oh, we'll raise the octane level by putting more methanol in, have it running all the time. But then there's the risk of it not, um, if say for instance, the meth kit fails or anything like that, then you could have some issues because then your engine's expecting more fuel or more of a rich mixture and it won't get it. So I'm simply running it solely for intake temps. Now this car, because it's a, a hybrid, turbo it runs exceptionally hot not in a bad way but it, it does run exceptionally hot so your intake temps let's say it's 30 degrees outside on a summer's day in england it happens like four times a year um if it's 30 degrees outside you'll be seeing 40 to 50 degrees uh intake air temperature which is crap your car's gonna run like crap it doesn't like hot air um you put methanol and you could bring that down to maybe 10 so you actually bring it down as if you're on like a cool summer's evening having a blast about and the car performs so much better. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you've taken your car out for a winter's drive in the morning, get it warmed up, take it out for a good blast, those cold air really does make you feel the extra few horsepower. Um, and also it's good, not so much on these because these don't suffer too bad with it, but on the newer cars, they get quite a carbon buildup like the Mark II TTSs and you can actually lose horsepower. So you have to get it walnut blasted, which is when they shoot the walnut shells into the, uh, the where the inlet manifold goes into the head, cleans all the valves, and then when you put water methanol on, it actually cleans um, every time you do a cycle, so you shouldn't get a carbon buildup going forward. So it's a win-win, um, but the reason I want to fit it on this is because this, Jermaine, when he had this engine in his car, run water methanol injection and was running nearly 400, I think he ran a smidge over 400 horsepower. Now I'm not hoping to hit that, but I would quite like another 10 or 20 and for it to get decent cold air intake temp. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. The reason that pipe is off where I was saying there was an S pipe with the two gloves hanging off um, is because I've sent the pipe to get welded because it has to have a thread welded into it so I can put the nozzle in like you saw on the other pipe. Um, and then I need to run the wiring. I'm gonna put the wiring up behind the catch can. Very, very simple. Um, it comes with a wiring diagram. I won't bore you with the details. If you wanna know a bit more about that, I might do a video solely on actually fully fitting the meth kit. I'll get everything run and then we'll do all the connections. Um, and then the third job, we're going to get it, is fitting this bad boy. So I absolutely love this shift tower um, in the Nagaro blue one, wicked. Um, there's a few things I'll change. I'll probably put around the, ins around the inside of the car is um, some foam gasket because there was quite a lot of wind that whistled in through that and it was really annoying. Um, and with this one, I want to take a little bit more care because obviously I want to keep the interior. So I need to take out the bezel that goes around and trim off part of it so I can get a nice fit. I'll do a video on that of, of fitting this because um, quite a few people have asked me for a bit more of a detailed video. But I need to get the exhaust off, the prop out the way, clean, uh, take all the heat shielding off and everything, and we'll do a separate video all about the shift tower. So quite a few changes. I'm also neatening up a, a few bits of pipe work and some of the Jubilee clips, which aren't, they're, they're showing their age. Most of the pipe work's actually very good. Um, but I thought, yep, yeah, it definitely needs, definitely, definitely, definitely needed better brakes because it was almost like um, a stock brakes with stock pads. When you press it, it just felt really woodeny, which was a bit scary when it's really thundering down the road. So brakes were an absolute must. The meth, if I can bring them air intake temps down and get a few more horsepower, and it's going to be better for the engine rather than running really, really hot. And of course, the shift tower, because the shifting on that is amazing. Since driving this without that, I feel like I'm, I'm leaning down to get to it, which I don't like. <laughs> but yeah, relatively straightforward fit. I just need to do a bit more finesse, trying to get it in and get it all um, cut around. I'm gonna suss out how to fit the meth on the 
um, rear seat delete, how to get it all nice. I need to sort of mock it up and then work out where the pipes are gonna go so I can get a nice sweep on the pipes. I don't wanna kink them, I don't want them all over the gaff. Um, but yeah, quite a lot going on on this. Uh, of course, I need to finish doing the under waxing. There's a few little bits of bodywork to address, but that's what the winter's for. It's got a cracked windscreen, which I need to get replaced, which annoyingly appeared out of nowhere. Um, it needs the scuttle changing, but I've got a new one. So it's just loads of little bits. Um, what are you working on this winter? Because I mean, a winter's perfect for, I mean, providing it's not your daily, if it's your daily, don't take it off the road. Because once it's off the road, then you'll be, oh, I found this. Oh, did you say, oh, I found this. Oh, I've got to do that. <laughs> this, it goes on and on. But um, yeah, just, just a general tidy up. Like we've done the injector um, plug, so it runs phenomenally. It does not miss a beat now, which is amazing because that was, incredibly annoying when you give it full boost and blah, 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 starts having a bit of a misfit and starts beeping at you and then you panic because you don't want to break it um so yeah that's nice that that's fixed decent stoppers I'll, like i said i'll check the rears if i have to swap the rears so be it i'm not really worried about caliper color because those wheels cover it anyway so it doesn't really matter too much but just have a good look around and get it perfect for next year there probably isn't too many shows um because obviously they've we're no longer doing Vorsprung International Audis in the park. So we've got, what have we got left? We've got uh, Bewley, which is simply Audi in April 14th, I think. And then there's a German car show in October. There's a couple in the middle, but there's not really any Audi, Audi specific shows bar those. So um, we'll probably do a few breakfast meets. I'm probably gonna do a couple of road trips uh, because who doesn't love a road trip? but I wanna get out and use the car more. Last year we did a lot of shows and I like shows, but it is very samey. Um, you go there, you park up, you all look at each other's cars, you have two burgers, two cakes and an ice cream and then you wander home and then go and spend loads of money on the computer, <laughs> which is great, but I would rather get out and do some mileage in the car next year, I think. I don't know, what about you? Do you prefer the shows or do you wanna get out and do a bit? I mean, I know a lot of you guys don't really like traveling the distance. Um, some do, some don't. Because I know when we put up meets and they're like, oh, it's 200 miles or, or whatever, uh, which I get. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to jump in this and drive all around the country. That's why I'm sort of taking it off the road each winter, only for maybe a month, because there's nothing going on in December anyway. Um, go through it all and just make sure it's the best car it can be. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it gives me the best chance next year of having the least amount of issues. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much where I am. Quite a lot going on. I wanna know what you're doing. What projects have you got? Also, we're gonna get some more cards on the channel. Um, I love looking at TTs. And if any of you wanna get your car on the channel, it's a bit special, it's a bit weird. You think people might love it. You know where to find me. <laughs> All the details are down in the description. Um, and don't miss out, we've got our calendar on the website. Um, I think I've only got about seven or eight copies left. Once they're gone, they're gone. Um, so do, Grab those, thanks for everyone that takes part, really appreciate it, and for the 30 or 40 people who've already bought theirs and got it hung up ready with all the dates on. We'll get loads more breakfast meets and meets in there going forward. But guys, thank you, hope you've enjoyed my update. Um, I wanna know what you're up to down in the comments, but until next time, bye for now.